Hey everybody, so this week it looks like we're into the intro war and World War II years. So we're going to discuss how uh, the separate art movements during this uh, time played into how they contributed to the big picture uh, of this period. And also we're going to take a look at uh, the shared themes that define this era. So let's get into it. So we have to go back and remember what's going on during this era. We're just coming out of World War I. Uh, we're heading into the Great Depression, and then we're also uh, entering into World War II. So the art world during this period started using a lot of politics, uh, and it seemed like there was a, a struggle in some countries between socialism and capitalism. So it's portrayed in a handful of different artworks. Um, each movement in their own way took notice uh, between the the gap between the poor and the wealthy so artists begin to sympathize with the ugliness of the working class and how they were treated during this time um, you can see this after the mexican revolution uh, mexican muralists started to come out and artists like jose orozco uh, painted the a mural called the banquet of the rich uh, this artwork as you can see it depicts kind of the bourgeois people at the top the painting and then when you get and look towards the bottom you see this fighting amongst the uh, working class which are also at the bottom of the social class in this so these ideologies centered around uh, technological and industrial and they started rationalizing root, roots of uh, progress to the point of eliminating people with mental illness just euthanizing them basically um, and you started getting movements kind of like the socialist realism movement where artists were used by, by totalitarian governments as uh, by means to, for propaganda and to support their regimes as you can see in the cover magazines of the new masses by William Groper uh, just uh, where they were going with that how different that was and then the capitalist mindset in America uh, and there seems to be an increase in uh, political upheaval and the Second World War that loomed and encouraged fears that human civilization was in a state of crisis and on the verge of collapse. So this led artists to focus on human figures and condition. Society sought new ways of coming to terms with modern life after a war that used uh, advances in technology as tools of destruction. And this also leads to many of the shared themes, which we're going to talk about, which was a return to the classicism and the Renaissance era. You start seeing a lot of artists during this period go back and uh, they're characterized by like this regressive and uh, nostalgic style painting. So you can see in the self-portrait by uh, Giorgio de Cherico, uh, <clears throat> of the intrawar classicism uh, movement where he uh, demonstrates the belief that painters must look back at the classic sculptures as a model to leave the messiness of humanity behind. And these themes also emulated old masters such as Rembrandt. And so there's a lot of the art movements during that time that went back and started kind of just simplifying it and doing more of Rembrandt style paintings and you can see this old uh, way uh, painted by Kenneth Hayes Miller's painting of the fitting room where the swirls of the clothing and the limbs evoke the Renaissance style painting so a lot of these movements as surrealism and the 14th Street School and the Harlem Renaissance which had Egyptian style themed uh, inspired works all went back kind of in time and was doing that my two questions are uh, <clears throat> the first explain how people today enjoy the Renaissance period and my second question is what intrigues you to embrace parts of the past in an ever-changing modern world so that is my take this week on the readings and the questions. So I hope everybody out there is doing great and we will see you in two weeks. Thanks for watching. Bye.